Hi, I'm Anna Zabotnik, and I'm the chair of the Maude Hart Lovelace Reading Committee for Minnesota Youth Reading Awards. I'd like to start off today by thanking all of the Minnesota youth for reading and voting for Maude Hart Lovelace this year. I'd also like to thank all of their teachers, librarians, and parents for helping them get these books in their hands that could bring them to places we couldn't go and for bringing us all together. I'm so excited to announce our honor winners and winners for this year's Maude Hart Lovelace Book Awards. Our first Maude Hart Lovelace honor for Division I goes to the Losers Club by Andrew Clements. Unfortunately, Andrew Clements cannot be with us today because he passed away this year. Please take a moment to honor his work and his contributions to children's literature. Our next Maude Hart Lovelace honor for Division I is for Framed by James Ponty. I'm so excited to introduce to you author James Ponty. Hello, my name is James Ponty and I'm a middle grade author and I am much better suited to be behind a keyboard than in front of a camera. But I wanted to thank you today. Um, so far I've written eight books. One of them is Framed. And amazingly, Framed received a Mod Heart Lovelace Division I honor in Minnesota. And that is a huge thrill to me and a surprise to me. And a surprise because we don't get into this to win awards. Um, we get into this to connect with readers. And what's so great about this award is that actually it is a connection with readers in a sort. And that is a thrill for me. In fact, little known fact, you get to sort these things when you're an author. I, in the last two years, I have sold more books in Greater Minneapolis than anywhere else in the country, even where I live here in Orlando, even more than New York. That is because there's such a great tradition there. It is fed by the Minnesota Youth Reading Awards. It's fed by great literary traditions of the state that's produced F. Scott Fitzgerald. And it's uh, where there are so many great, wonderful bookstores, especially independent bookstores. So thank you all to my friends in Minnesota. Um, it is an honor and a privilege, and I hope to see you in person sometime soon. Thank you, James. If all of you enjoyed the book Framed, make sure you check out the other books in James Ponty's ser Framed series. And now, the winner of the Maude Hart Lovelace Division I, Wish, by Barbara O'Connor. I'm pleased to introduce to you Barbara O'Connor. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Barbara O'Connor, and I'm the author of Wish. And I'm very flattered and honored to say that Wish has been chosen to win the Maud Hart Loveless Award. Uh, I know that it takes a lot of people to make that happen. Uh, and I want to thank all of them. First of all, the committee. I know how hard you work, and I appreciate that. Uh, I want to thank librarians and teachers and parents who get books into the hands of children but of course, most of all, I want to thank the children of Minnesota. You know, I've been very fortunate in my career to have received a number of recognitions for my work, but there is none more important and more meaningful to me than the awards uh, chosen by children. Uh, so, because that's what it's all about, the kids, right? Um, oh, before I forget, I wanted to show you my, my shirt. Stay home, read books. That's a good one, right? That's from my local bookshop. Shout out to Malaprops in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I've been writing for a long time. I wasn't born knowing how to write. I learned just the way everybody learns. Um, but I do still have one thing I like to share. Um, this is my sixth grade um, report card. Uh, and this is language, spelling, and writing. And I'm showing it to you to show you what the teacher wrote. She wrote, we have enjoyed Barbara's creative poems, stories, and plays. So way back then I was writing and I was lucky to have a teacher who encouraged me. Um, I receive a lot of letters from kids and parents and teachers. Uh, and I want to share one of them with you um, because I think it's important. Dear Mrs. O'Connor, I just wanted to write a quick thank you to let you know how much I appreciate the excitement for reading you lit within Haley. 
She is a very strong reader, but I constantly need to ask her to read before she read your book, Wish. She loved reading your book. The night she finished Wish, she decided she had to read another one of your books. Because I wanted to take advantage of her never-seen-before excitement for reading, we ran out to our local library in our PJs just before it closed. We are now happily reading a couple of chapters into Wonderland. Here's the important part. Thank you for lighting that fire for reading within Haley. What you do matters and doesn't go unnoticed. You have given me a very special gift, and I wanted you to know I'm so thankful. Well, of course, that goes right into my scrapbook. I love to read that. Um, so it makes me very proud to have lit, lit the fire for reading in, in a child. And if it, even if I just get one, um, my job is done. So that's really great. But it takes a village, all of us, to make that happen. Um, the committee was fortunate, was kind enough to send me some questions uh, to answer for you, so that's good. So I'm going to answer some questions. Um, one of them says, what inspired you to write your book? My inspiration for Wish, my biggest inspiration, was the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains where I live right now. I grew up near these mountains and I spent many, many happy years um, going to summer camp here, my parents driving up into the mountains for picnics. Um, but I moved away as when I grew up and I was gone for a long time. And five years ago, my husband retired and we came back to the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains and now I live in Asheville and the mountains are all around me. So I knew I wanted to write a book where the setting was an important part of the story. So that's sort of key. Um, another inspiration for the story was this. I was teaching a um, biography writing workshop to a class of fifth graders in Massachusetts. They interviewed a relative and I was going to help them write a little biography, short biography. So one boy interviewed his grandmother and I asked him to share his favorite interview question. And he, he shared the question, what were some of your favorite activities as a child? And his grandmother said, soccer, ballet, and fighting. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. I filed it away in my memory bank, and before you knew it, that's where Charlie came from. A uh, little feisty Charlie. What advice do you have for a young writer? Well, um, to be a better writer, you need to do three things. You need to read, read, read. That's so, so important. Also, I'm going to mute my phone here for a minute, sorry. Um, I also like to remind young writers, don't ever get frustrated if you think you've write, written something that's not very good, because you can make it better, but you can't fix what you haven't written. So just get it on the paper, and you can fix it and make it better later. Um, I've written lots of crummy stuff, um, but I, then I work on it and make it better. Um, and I also like to remind them, whenever possible, to show the story, the character, the setting, whatever it is, instead of telling. Don't tell me he was mad. Show me he was mad. He stormed out of the room and slammed the door. Kids get that little technique and it's fun to work on that with them. Um, where do you write best? Um, I write best um, outside. I have a barn in my backyard and there's a deck on the barn, a covered deck. I love to write up there. It's quiet. The birds are chirping and my dogs are at my feet and um, it's very pleasant. When it's not, the weather doesn't cooperate, I'm lucky enough to have a writing studio that my husband built for me. So uh, I need quiet and silence. Um, so I like to go out there in the winter time. Um, when your work gets rejected or heavily edited, edited how do you deal with that disappointment? Um, I eat a lot of Oreos. <laughs> Kidding. Um, well, not kidding. Um, it's hard. It's hard. You, th you think you've written the best you can and then here comes somebody telling you you got to make it better. The good news is I work, I've work. i worked with the same publishing company through my whole career, thirty almost 30 years. Uh, I worked with the fabulous editor Frances Foster for 18 of those years and she was amazing. And now I'm working with the same editor since Fr Frances passed away. Um, and so we know each other very well. And uh, I'm going to confess things. I do often get angry and annoyed and irritated, 
but I try to take a deep breath and get over it and realize she's that my editor is on my team and she's trying to make my book better and she's almost always right not always but almost always so um, you just have to deal with it. It's part of the writing process. And there is no writer on the planet, not J.K. Rowling, not Dave Pilkey, not Jeff Kinney, nobody who writes perfectly the first time around. So I keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. How has coronavirus impacted what you do as an author? Oh, boy. Well, um, unfortunately, right now, I have a new book coming out in January. And all the beautiful marketing plans went down the drain. I was going to have a national book tour. I was going to several conferences. I was going to several book festivals. Um, and, of course, none of that is going to happen. I'm sure I'll be doing um, various things online, panels and whatever, virtually. So that's one of the biggest impacts. It's very disappointing. Um, and then, you know, being able to go to bookstores and being able to go to schools. Oh my gosh, I love going to schools. And that's been, and I used to go a lot. Uh, and there's nothing like speaking to real live children and getting a real live hug. Uh, so that's been a big um, change for me. Uh, I am doing virtual school visits, but it's just not the same. Uh, and th those are the biggest impacts. Uh, let's see. Are there any fun hidden things that you put in your book? Yes. Um, almost all of my newer, newer books have somewhere in them have a reference to a butterfly. <laughs> and here's why. Um, I am very close with three other authors, um, and the four of us have done a number of writing retreats together. Uh, one of them is Kirby Larson. You might know Kirby. writes fabulous historical fiction. Won a Newbery Honor award for Hattie Big Sky. Um, and she has a lovely um, vacation home on the coast uh, in Washington State. And the four of us uh, had a retreat there. And we, we were reading our work to each other and then critiquing it. And in one of them, I used a phrase, um, he wished he could take the words back, scoop them up like butterflies in a net. And I just loved that phrase but it didn't make sense in the context of what was happening. The words that he wanted to scoop up were harsh, sharp words, not like butterflies. Um, and so ever since then, we sort of laugh about that. And we, and we all decided to call ourselves the Butterfly Sisters. <laughs> and now we all put a little reference somewhere to a butterfly. So if you see a butterfly, um, that's where it came from. Um, what were your favorite books when you were a kid? Oh boy, I loved Mysteries. Um, this was a cool one. I, I used to love The Pink Motel. Um, of course, I read all of the Nancy Drew Mysteries. Uh, so those were some of my favorites. As an adult, I like to say my favorite book is Missy May. Uh, and here's why. I, when I was just starting my career, I was struggling to find my writing voice. You know, what makes my writing unique and distinct from other writers? And my writing was very bland. And I read Missy May, and it really spoke to me because it has a very strong sense of place, um, the mountains of West Virginia where she grew up. So I thought, you know, I'm going to write books with a strong sense of place, which is the South where I grew up. And bing, a light went off, my writing voice appeared, and... Um, I've been writing books set in the South ever since, and it seems to be working for me. So um, I get, I wrote her a letter and thanked her, and she wrote me back, handwritten. It's in my scrapbook. She wrote me twice, as a matter of fact. Um, I love um, books that have unique uh, and distinct voices. And the last question is, uh, which features a great dog character? Were you inspired by real life dogs? Uh, I love dogs. I'm a sucker for a dog. I have two. I've always loved them. My, everyone in my family loves dogs. And I think most kids like dogs. Here, Ironically, here's something um, interesting. Uh, my newest book, which is coming out in January, is called Halfway to Harmony. And originally, it didn't have a dog in it. And when my editor was talking to me about revisions. She said, marketing, the marketing department would like to know if uh, you could put a dog in the book. <laughs> um, and they, she said, because they'd like to have a dog on the cover. I think that's gotten to be sort of a trademark thing with me or something. I don't know. But, and kids are attracted to that. So I said, sure, 
I can put a dog in the book, and so I put a little dog named Porkchop in there, and it was actually really fun and became a good part of the story, so I'm glad I did it. Um, so that's it. That's all the questions. Uh, I thank you so very much um, for this award. I'm so grateful and very proud, and um, I'm very lucky to have this line of work and do what I do. So good luck to you all. Um, thank you for uh, letting me be a part of um, your event. And um, that's all I got to say. So thank you. Thank you, Barbara. The Minnesota Youth Reading Awards are honored to have you with us today.